Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and today I have the book reviewer tag. This tag was created by Read a Book Gem and I was tagged by the creator. This tag is all about how we as booktubers and reviewers approach reviews. It is split into sections, the first being making reviews. Therefore, I'll just get straight on with this one. One. Where do you post your book reviews outside of booktube? For example, Goodreads, social media, retailers, blogs, etc. <laughs> I only use YouTube now. When I first started out talking about books on the internet, that was through my blog in 2009. None of those reviews are still available. However, copies of them can be found on Goodreads when I started using that as well. Sometimes I will mention reviews of books on my Instagram account, primarily books that I really am fond of, perhaps debuts or lesser known books that I want more people to know about. But for the most part, I do only use Booktube as the platform in which I discuss and review works. Two, what is your star rating system? I do not have a star rating system. Again, it is something that I had in place when I was younger, but I found myself questioning putting arbitrary numbers against books. So here I have three books that I rated five stars. The Trouble with Goats and Sheep by Joanna Cannon, The Luminaries by Alana Catton, and The Spindlers by Lauren Oliver. They are all books I thoroughly adore. However, they are all completely different. And I recognise that also it all comes down to taste. What I like in a book or the people might not necessarily care for. When I review a book, I am reviewing it to properly understand my thoughts on it and also I suppose there is something in there that I hope that other people would like to enter into a discussion with me about my thoughts. But at the same time, I would never say, technically I'd say that I don't actually review books, I just share my thoughts. Because I do question whether there is actually a correct way to write a book and whether certain books are brilliant, amazing works of art but I just wouldn't like them and that's why I much prefer to talk about a book in this all-encompassing manner of sharing the good bits and the bits that I didn't particularly like although I will admit that for the most part I do tend to just share the good bits when I thoroughly enjoy a book nowadays but I could never find the right balance because when it came to The Luminaries this was a book that I took nearly two months reading and I thoroughly adored it and I'd say this is very literary in its scope but when I reference that against The Trouble with Goats and Sheep I much re prefer this one because this appeals to my sensibilities of being humorous and going into people's psyche being quite the easy read and because it's accessible I think I prefer this more and also it does a lot of things I love to see in fiction. I'm aware that my likes and dislikes influence a way I rate a book so I couldn't really ever figure out a star rating system and just chose not to have one. That's just the way I go about things. Three, convince me to read a favourite book of yours in no more than five words. The Miseducation of Evie Epworth by Matson Taylor. A hilarious northern comedy. Did it in four. Four. Which book was the hardest to review and why? For me, this was The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov that I read in July. I find when I don't feel smart enough to have read a book that often I find it difficult to review a book. Similarly, when I'm reading poetry, I find it difficult to review, so I will pick out a few poems and talk about what they meant to me. In terms of The Master and the Margarita, there was so much going on in there that I didn't understand. I just knew that I liked the book for the most part. And in terms of poetry, I still feel as though I'm one of these people who can say that I liked or dislike it. And I think it goes back to having this insecurity that I am not smart enough to be reading certain types of books. I know that that's constantly going to be there when reading, but it definitely affects 
my later reviewing of those. Five, are there any books you won't review or give a star rating to out of principle? The answer to that is no. Even when I have disliked a friend's book that they have written, I have been honest about my thoughts. I've perhaps changed the manner in which I would talk about it, so I'd still emphasise that it's not a book for me, but that other people might like it based on this, this, this and this. And I think that's the way that my reviews have turned a bit. Of course there are going to be the times when I vehemently hate a book and there's nothing I can do about that, but I do try and find things in there that other people might like. And then we move on to the second section of this tag, which is viewing reviews. So we go on to question six. A book you really want to read has terrible reviews. Do you still read it? Yes. I found on booktube that there are people whose opinions I tend to disagree with and so sometimes if they dislike a book I will purchase that book knowing that I'm probably going to like it. A few years ago everyone was harping on about the Essex Serpent and it became a booktube darling so I got it for my birthday. I didn't particularly like that book so when a ton of other people read Malmoth and didn't like it I guessed that that would be a book for me. Buddy read it with Abby of Abby Mac Reads last year and this was definitely a tale for me, focused on death, depression and sadness in the world, just my bag. And sometimes I will actually seek out terrible reviews of things I like or that are hyped up to lessen my opinion of a book so that I don't go in thinking it's going to be the most amazing thing to ever grace literature. Seven, where do you view book reviews outside of booktube and what is your preferred format? For example, short, long, video, print, etc. I go with the newspapers, Goodreads and Booktube and sometimes I'll even search blogs. If there is a book that I'm unsure about purchasing then I seek out more reviews. I do not have a preferred format for a review at all. I just constantly seek them out. Eight. At what points do you view reviews of a book you are reading? Before, during or after? And do you seek out reviews similar to your own or opposing? I seek them out all the time. Sometimes I will have seen a lot of people talking about a book beforehand, which comes from the territory of doing booktube and watching people's wrap-ups and watching people's reviews. You're going to find out a lot of opinions about books before you have chance to read them yourself. Sometimes I'll be reading a book and I will be considering DNFing it. And so I will seek out reviews of the book then to, and specifically the negative reviews, to see whether people have a similar opinion to me. If it never changes, then I know that the book won't be for me, so you don't see me talk about that book and I just get rid of it and we don't ever hear that I interacted with that text at all, and that's a fine thing indeed. Sometimes I will love a book so much that I seek out reviews of that. Sometimes I will hate a book so much I seek out reviews of it. Sometimes I love a book so much that I avoid looking at any reviews about it at all. I did recommend The Trouble with Goats and Sheep a lot back in the day. It's still the one I hold up as my favourite because I don't think I've read enough others yet. There are probably others that could go past this book this book currently still my favourite. And so I share this book with a lot of people. There are people that because they know how much I love this book, seek me out just to tell me how much they dislike it. So do you know what I do now? I don't read or seek out reviews about the trouble with goats and sheep. Just leave me alone in my adoration of this text. Please. Then we move on into our third section of this tag and that is Stand Out From The Crowd. Which book have you read with the lowest rating on Goodreads that you loved? I will say Malmoth by Sarah Perry because I know that the consensus on booktube at the time was that people didn't really tend to like that book as much as they like The Essex Serpent and I really like that one. It's just marvellous and it's so full of stuff to go in and unpick and yeah my experience of reading that was second to none when it comes from buddy read and discussion and just the overall content it's that one. Then we move on to question 10 which is which book have you read with the highest rating on goodreads that you hated? It's a book I read this year, a book that I sold 
on eBay during lockdown to try and earn a bit of money back for myself because I was upset about how much I spent. And that is Crescent City, House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. Sarah J Mass has her fans. She is writing great paranormal romance. That is fine. Had this be, was this, you know, if this was 10 years ago, I can say that this series would probably have been one of those things that I gobbled up. But I have moved on with fiction. And I just think that this book was so incredibly terrible and trite. And so many people love it. And I despise it with every fibre of my being. And that's the tag. I would just like to say that I do recognise the importance of reviews and as a writer myself I know how great it is and how much it helps to receive reviews not just on YouTube, on Goodreads, on Amazon, on Waterstones, on all of these platforms. It really helps writers because other readers can check that and know whether it's going to be for their tastes. And again, reviews are for readers, they aren't for writers but they do help benefit writers. And I should probably get on with this idea of reviewing more of the works that I enjoy on these other platforms. <sighs> that being said, we have now reached the end of the questions and so I think it apt that I tag a few people. So I am going to tag Dane of Dane Reads, Emily of Novel Novels, Leo of A Little Book Life, Somebody Re <laughs> Some Bunny Reads even, and... Did I say Emma of Emma Rosen books? Because if I didn't, I'm tagging her as well. And them's the questions. It's been interesting to think about what sort of reviewer I am. And I am so pleased that my family waited until I was getting to the end of this video before they decided to start moving around in the background. I hope that you have enjoyed this video. If you want to discuss any of the things I have discussed today, then please feel free to do so in the comments. And until next time, that is all.